Hi, I'm Michael, and this is Michael. I'm a landscape architect and I'm an environmentalist, and today we're going to do part two of our butterfly garden. We're here at Gordon Nursery Mart, and we're going to go pick up some butterfly plants for his garden. So, you ready to dig in? Let's go! You may recall that we've already posted a video on when we went to Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens and went to their butterfly house to get some ideas of what they've done, get some inspiration. Well, now that we've absorbed that, we're gonna move on to part two, where we can use a survey to design a garden. We're gonna do this for our niece and nephew. Um, or if you don't have a survey, you can always do it from an aerial and we'll show you both ways. Step one, creating your base plan for your butterfly garden, either through a home survey or through an aerial. This is a typical example of a home survey. This is not uh, Nicole and Michael's home. This is just an example. But what you want to do is when you get a survey, these are very helpful if you want to do your own uh, garden design because surveys are scaled. And let's go over what the basic elements of a survey are. Here's the north arrow, and next to the north arrow is the drawing scale. This survey was drawn at one inch equals 30 feet, which you could use to design your butterfly garden, or you could use a copy machine and have it enlarged to a scale of one inch equals 10 feet, which will give you a little bit more real estate on the sheet of paper to lay out your garden design. Also, you're gonna to need to get an engineering scale, like the one I'm showing here, to help you accurately measure your garden space. Okay, now let's continue reviewing the survey. Over here is the property line boundary. That shows you your property limits, and ultimately somewhere within that space is where you will be designing your garden. The next element we need to identify is where your home is located, the residence, that's that gray area, and then the lawn areas surrounding the home. So that will give you a guide of, hey, where are opportunities to plant? Then there's the area of the driveways, and that's typically in and out of a right-of-way, which is property adjacent to your home, but it's not owned by you. You sometimes can plant in a right-of-way, but not always. And lastly, here's a large open area in the backyard of the home that looks like it'd be a perfect location for a butterfly garden. But before you jump in and start designing your butterfly garden, you're going to need to identify where your windows and doors are so you have access or views to your butterfly garden, and also things such as hose bibs, AC units, and electrical outlets. You want to screen the AC units, but you want to allow access to the hose bib and electrical outlets so that you can use them when you need them. And now we're going to switch over to designing the butterfly garden from an aerial. Many folks don't have access to uh, a survey, and that's the case with us. So you can easily do this from an aerial, and I'm going to show you those steps now. So all you need to do is just open up Google Earth. It's a free program online. Type in the address you want your, for your home, and then Google will zoom in to the property you see here. Then you simply just take a snip, a screenshot of that property you want to design and then you have your base. But another great thing about Google Earth is that they have a ruler function and you can change it to uh, inches or feet. Here we were using feet to get some rough parameters of what the size and dimensions are of spaces within the property. Here you can see the driveway is 10 feet. That's typical most driveways and homes. Just helps confirm what the aerial is showing. And you can also just find out what the the distance is from the edge of the home to the property line, showing 26 feet here. And this is super helpful to help you set up your base if you don't have a survey. It gives you some rough ideas of dimensions. You'll still need to go out in the field and confirm, and that's what we're gonna do next. But this is great to give you uh, bearings on how uh, your space, space is laid out. So here's the aerial view of the home and now what you want to do is just print this out and with tracing paper uh, outline the home, the driveway, and any walks that you know that are visible. And we're going to use this as the, as the drawing that you can confirm the dimensions of the garden spaces you want to do for your home. And in our case we're going to do them in three different garden plots. Um, a lot of the home has uh, pavement and walkways and patios already existing. 
So what they've asked us to do is to, to look at uh, designing one in the front and two small ones in the back next to the covered patio. So we're going to focus on that, uh, but we need to know those dimensions because we don't have a survey and we need, we need that so we know how many plants can go into each of these garden plots. Here I am in the front yard and the first garden plot is 48 inches deep by 20 feet 6 inches long. You will also need to measure existing elements in the garden plot such as the fountain that they have here and existing shrubs and trees. Okay, now I've moved on to the backyard, and here's the second garden plot. It's very small. It's 8 feet 6 inches long by 24 inches wide. And it also has a few existing shrubs that we're going to note on the drawing. And here's the third garden plot. It's L-shaped. It's 12 feet long and approximately 2 feet wide. Now with that information, we're ready to start designing, but you also want to identify existing features of the home, where the water hose bibs are located, where the front door is, where windows are, so you don't put any plants that would possibly block a window, as well as future development. In our case, there's going to be a walkway added near the garden plot number three, so we have to take that into account. And on garden plot number one, we have an overhead wire that we have to be aware of, but all our stuff is small, so it shouldn't be an issue. Here's the first garden plot that we uh, dimensioned. And in the back, the second garden plot next to the porch is right here, which I'm circling. And the third one, the little L-shaped one, is over here. And now what we're going to do is take each of these and enlarge them to a scale that we can draw the, the butterfly garden. And you get an idea of how many plants can go in those spaces. Here it's too small the way it is to show all the plants. So that's why we're going to enlarge it. So let's go on to that step. Step three, designing your butterfly garden. In order for your butterfly garden design to be successful, you're going to need to know a few things about butterflies. Butterflies are attracted to nectar plants, and that's what we're going to be showing you here, ones that are well suited for South Florida. But butterflies are also attracted to host plants. And what do I mean by that? Host plants are plants that butterflies will lay their eggs, and they're very specific on the type of plants they lay their eggs. So you typically want to strive for a well-balanced butterfly garden that has both nectar plants and host plants, if you can. If you have ample room in your yard, try to locate your butterfly garden in a sunny location. This will help the nectar plants bloom more often, and it will also help butterflies since they're cold-blooded. You may also want to consider adding a puddling station to your butterfly garden. A puddling station is basically an area where male butterflies will congregate to get salts out of the soil or damp soil. So you can simply create one by getting some beach sand, putting it on a small dessert plate, adding a little bit of water, and then placing that plate under the butterfly plants. The male butterflies will thank you. And I am all too familiar with puddling since you may recall in the first video of this series, when I was at Fairchild, I was sweating a lot and a male butterfly landed on my face and was licking the salt, salty water off my face. I couldn't believe it. You silly butterfly. Okay, now that we have the information on what makes a good butterfly garden, let's go lay out the first garden plot. So what you can see here is the first garden plot in the front yard. It has a length of 20 feet, 6 inches, and a depth of 4 feet, or 48 inches. And what I've done was shown that garden plot on an overlay of grid paper. So this is very helpful for those of you who, who don't have a, um, a survey. You can use grid paper and create dimensions how you see fit for your garden space. We're using the grid square to be 1 foot by 1 foot. So 4 squares equals 4 feet, 20 squares long equals 20 feet. So this gives you an accurate measurement of the space, allowing us to properly lay out the existing elements in the space as well as the new plant material. And speaking of existing elements, let's go over what we know is already there in garden plot number one that we want to keep. So here's the existing fountain. Next to that is the large Musianda shrub. And to the right of that are two large palms. And along the neighbor's fence are 
four Song of India shrubs that we want to keep and grow up and screen the neighbor. And to the right of that is an existing light pole with a reed palm growing next to it. So that basically lays out all the existing things growing or, or installed in that garden space. So now we know the available area for us to plant the rest of this butterfly garden. Okay, so we don't need that text anymore now that we've reviewed that. So here's our space. And the first thing you wanna do when you're looking to design your butterfly garden is to ask yourself, what kind of garden do I wanna have? The, the folks that we're designing for, Michael and Nicole, they want a wild butterfly jungle. So that guides us on what we're going to be planting, but you may consider something more formal or even subdued. It depends on your own personal taste. As for me, I got my marching orders. We're gonna design a butterfly jungle. So that means we're gonna have quite a few different species of butterfly attracting plants in the garden plot here. And I'm gonna kick off the design by adding in two purple butterfly bush. These are amazing nectar plants, y'all. You can see how large the flower is by Michael's hand as a comparison, and they form just these profuse arrays, spiraling arrays of uh, purple flowers. Now that we've started to identify some plants, we're gonna need to create a plant list. And in that plant list, you're gonna need to identify how many plants, the name of the plant, both the common and botanical, if you can get it, and what size the plant you want to purchase will be. So, as you can see here, I have two purple butterfly bush listed, the botanical name as well, Budlia davidii, and it's in a three gallon, we want a three gallon container, and we want them to be 20 inches OA, meaning overall, 20 inches overall in size. Now I'm gonna add in two native Pineland lantana. They have this bright, yellow flower. It is a Florida native, like I said, and it is a major butterfly attractor. This lantana is more of a ground cover. It grows more horizontally. So for our plant list, you can see we have two Pineland lantana, lantana depressa, variety depressa, and we're calling out a one gallon. You don't need to list it as a three gallon. Since lantanas grow pretty fast, a one gallon will do fine. Now we're gonna be adding in blue porterweed, which is a nectar plant, as well as a host plant for the tropical buckeye. It has these beautiful royal blue flowers, almost purple, really pretty. Next plant we're gonna be putting in is a Jatropha. It's not a native, but it is extremely drought tolerant and it flowers year round here in South Florida. It has these beautiful, beautiful bright red flowers. I located it next to the fence and I called out for a multi trunk. So this will grow up into a small tree, a small bushy tree to help screen some of the views into the neighbor's yard. The next plant I'm going to be specifying is Pentis and we're going to use two different Pentis here. We're going to put in five star cluster lavender Pentis, beautiful soft lavender color to the flowers and star cluster white, which has these creamy, almost Arctic white flowers and we're gonna have them mixed in along the edge of the drive here. Now I'm adding in a dill plant, which is a host plant. This is our first one. It will attract the black swallowtail to lay eggs on its leaves. And the black swallowtail is enormous. It is a very large butterfly, super spectacular. The males are black and yellow, and the females are this beautiful deep purple with light blue tail. The next plant we're putting in is the milkweed, which is the host plant for the endangered monarch. I'm being strategic where I'm placing the milkweed. I'm putting them in the center of the garden space for a reason. And that is that the monarch caterpillar will eat these plants to the ground sometimes. And so they can look a little ratty and, and unkempt. So it's good to have them in the middle of the space so the other plants can kind of buffer the look. And don't worry if they're eaten to the ground. That means your butterfly garden is successful. These plants are very resilient. They usually reseed or regrow on their own. And another cool thing about the milkweed is that it's also a nectar plant for butterflies. And the last plants we're putting in to the butterfly garden in the front yard are petunias. These are not, note, these are not butterfly attractors, but my client, Michael David, wanted to buy his mom these candy stripe peppermint petunias for her, and so how could I say no?
with those last two plants, we are done with the front garden plot. What I'm going to do now is rotate into the back, but I'm not going to go in as in depth as I did in the front yard because I believe you probably got a good understanding of how I uh, look at planting the gardens. But I'm going to give you a few more plants um, choices in the back that we, we find will do well in that part of the, the yard. And then we'll have a full plant list created that has both the front and the two back plots and then go shopping for the plants. Okay, here we are with the two backyard plots, plot two and three. You can see the little circle and the aerial showing area two and area three. Plot number two has a length of eight feet and a width of two feet. And plot number three has a length of seven feet on one side, a width of two feet. And as the space turns to the right, it has a length of five feet. So a total length of, a perimeter length of 12 feet. These are much smaller spaces than what we did in the front yard, but we're still gonna pack them with plants because they want a jungle, a butterfly jungle. So like we did in the front yard, let's identify existing plants. In the back, plot two has two tie plants, two red sister tie plants, and plot three has one. And back over to plot two, we have one little lonely croton. Now to the plants, we're gonna start out with a yellow butterfly bush, the same same plant like the purple, but just with yellow flowers. And we'll be adding one in plot two and one in plot three. And over to plot three, we're gonna add in a blue porter weed. And back over to plot two, we're gonna be adding in a red jatropha to be a bookend to that space. Next plants we'll be adding are the beautiful yellow pineland lantana. We're gonna add one to plot two and two to plot three. The next plant I'm specifying is the pink Blumify Lantana. It's a wonderful pink, um, almost lavender colored lantana. It is not a native, but it's super drought tolerant, flowers all the time. But what's also really cool about it is, is that it's sterile and it doesn't get away and become a weed or a nuisance plant because some lantanas can invade other sensitive lands. So that's why I really like that plant. Interspersed with the pink Blumify, I'm adding the red Blumify Lantana, which is a robust grower and has these beautiful red and orange flowers that the butterflies go crazy for. Next, I'm adding in some dill plants and capping it all off with the design, a milkweed. So there we have it. We have our second plant list created. And now we just take that with our plant list from the front yard and go shopping for the plants. But one more thing I want to talk to you all about is plant notes. As a landscape architect, when I'm designing for a client, I always add them. And at a minimum, for even a small garden space, I call out that all plants must be for to number one at the time of installation so you get a healthy plant and that you put in some things about potting soil and watering needs, etc. Now we're on to step four where we go out and we purchase the plants. We chose to go to Florida Nursery Mart because they had a lot of the plants we were using. Now what I'm going to do is walk you through the process I go through when selecting plants. Now the pine and lantana is beautiful. Very good quality and we did have quite a few of these for our butterfly garden. Look how healthy they are. All right, all right Robot Michael, I need your help. Oh. All right, so what do we do when we, we check for a plant to make sure it's healthy? That's the first thing we want to make sure check there's... Well, that's a very good point. You want to make sure that the roots are shooting out the bottom that it may have been pot bound. And also there's no pests. No pests, exactly. So you want to make sure you don't see any aphids or mealy bugs or thrips. You want to see this, this nice and green. This looks healthy. It looks very healthy. It's got some flowers ready to pop, ready to pop out here so and some more buildings. So this one looks pretty good. There's another one over here that's just catching my eye. And this guy here, he's like, I want to grow. Another thing when you're looking at a nursery for uh, plants for your home, see that? Those are weeds. You don't want them. Because those will end up going in your garden. So you want to make sure that they're occasionally weeding or they're weeding their nursery material. Fun These still look good. What's well, a fun fact? These are also attractive. Yes, they are. I'm going to actually 
put that one in this one because we're going to get these two. Thank you, Michael. Santa does. We need two more of these guys. So let's yeah, get... of course, two more of these. They're Can you so grab healthy. this one and bring? Yeah, they're so healthy. Can you bring that over there? Thank you, Michael. Robot assist. One more. Robot assist mode. All right. Here's the Detrofa. Our landscape plan called out for two of them. So let's go pick them up. Leggy ones. You want to know where I found that little? I don't see any bugs, but there's some stunted growth here. So there was something that was on this poor guy. May have had spider mites one time. So you see the difference between not so good and excellent. Beautiful colors. Honeybee! Too. Here's our milkweed. Always want to check your milkweed to make sure you don't have aphids. They'll have little little dots up in here usually, about the size of a pencil tip, orange and little black hairs. You may think it's actually a monarch egg, but it's not, it's aphids. And they do attack the, the milkweed quite a bit. Hey, Uncle Mike. Yeah, what? Should we take this and take We've got a Panama rose back here. Butterflies love that too. We're going to have to pick up the milkweed at another nursery because they only had it in three gallon and we specified one gallon. And you don't really need three gallon. Milkweed grows so fast. One gallon is fine. We're looking for. Oh, here's the porter weed. Yeah, this we is what we're looking for. Butterflies love this. Okay, so some of these porter we do not look good. Some do. Yeah. That one looks very good. Healthy. Make sure it's healthy. Right. Yeah, it looks healthy. Yep. And these have beautiful blue flowers and they contrast with the yellow. So nice. And now for the red and pink lantana. Thank you, robot. The butterfly bush. The butterfly bush. This is the one we've been looking for. All right, we need to find a healthy one. This one looks healthy. Yeah? Right here. This one. Be healthy, this one. Yeah. Should we get another one of these? Yes. We want another one. Another full one. Oh, we have some more over here, too. Like these. That one I'm not a fan of. This one looked good flowering, but it's got some problem down here. It's, this got some problem. Yeah, but here. this, that's an old flower, but this one looks like he's coming out with a new one, but I think this he's part of your plant here. And here we go, the one that we were looking for, right here. Yeah, we may need to, we may need to keep looking. Some of them are looking a little ratty. We want them to look really healthy. Oh, 
Oh, look. Oh, beautiful. Look, it's right here. I know. It's also here, silly head. It's on both sides. I know. This one is the white one. I don't think so. The side may have been turned around. Right? Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, everybody, this is the white sandpaper vine queen's wreath. Oh, beautiful. It comes in a lavender as well. It's just so beautiful. Looks like wisteria. Oh, another butterfly. Yeah. That one's a little too leggy. I'm gonna put that one down, bring it over here. Do you see how this, yeah, it's really taking off. Oh, look, ladybug. Hello, ladybug. Hello, ladybug. It's an orange ladybug. Yeah. Ladybugs are great. They eat, they eat aphids and other, oh. whoop, just blew away. Yeah, it's gonna go eat some more bad bugs. I wanna get one of these, Michael. These are all flowering, getting ready to burst open. Let's pick a beautiful one over here. Okay. okay, so this one has got some weeds. No, thank you. But bursting with, bursting with flowers. Butterflies love it. This is a, this is a pretty, pretty good one. Other than those two weeds, we're taking it. So. Yeah? We're gonna go on the other side. I think they'll have the one gallon pentis over there. I want one of these. Yeah? Yeah. Just to have it? Mm-hmm. All right. Pick one you want, pick one you like. Okay. So. Overall, we did pretty good. We didn't get all our plants, but we got a lot of them. So I'll have to go get some more Pentas at a store. So let's go pay. Where's our other cart? All right, we got to turn around because we're going that way. Got to pull it back. Try to turn it. There you go. So all the plants cost us about $240, and here we are starting to load up our Tesla. Looks like, looks like we did it. Looks like we got, keep the window down, put the window down. Is there room for you in there? No. Did we, <laughs> is this crazy or what? Yes, it's crazy. Yeah? It's crazy too. Yeah? You're going to have an amazing butterfly garden with peppermints! I wonder what they would Help. <laughs> Please. Help me. <laughs> we'll get you there soon enough. We, we did get quite a lot of plants. Now, step five, our final step. Installing your butterfly plants. Here we are at garden plot number one in the front yard, and we're going to start laying out the plants. All right, thank you for bringing the pentas. Let's just set them down on the, on the concrete. Butterfly garden, you want to check the weeds. So, no, 
see that it's very healthy with all these roots, right? Pentis, this is white pentis, butterfly attractor. And you also, you wanna set the plant at the height of the existing soil around it. So here's the existing soil. It's about the right height, a little bit up, which is fine because we have some mulch. This is a, a plastic uh, weed barrier that we cut through. And then you just sort of rinse and repeat this up and down. And I'll help him so he sets that at the right height. We're gonna add a little bit of improved potting soil mix to this. Uh, you don't always have to, it depends on your type of soil in South Florida. Uh, you may wanna uh, check and see if you're down South Miami, you probably have a lot of rock, so you probably wanna improve it. But plants have to adapt to the area they're growing, so you don't have to sweep the soil too much because otherwise they'll just stay in, the, in that little area and not, not set the roots out too to adapt to the potting soil so we can mix it in and we'll just move on to the next step. Now the fun part, we're just going to add water to the plants gently. So let's just start up high and then drip down and just sort of shower them with some, shower with them some water. do some spot watering at the base of some of the plants where the soil was uh, sticking up just to kind of level it out. So, the other part is just to hose down your drive. Get all the dirt from the install back into the plant. is newly installed i'm gonna add some more mulch but got a lot of butterfly plants in there ready to go yeah okay next step so we've got our design for the backyard we're gonna go and we, and we already laid out the plants on both sides of the steps up to the porch the back porch so we're gonna go install those plants now all right let's get to the next step so you haven't put the plants in we got our first butterfly hello buddy oh hello buddy And here we are at the final step. Enjoy your butterfly garden. <laughs> so that was fun, right? You had a good time? Yes. You like the butterfly plants? Yes? yes? Yeah, we the got dill. Them. Yeah, the dill took off over there. Yep. And here we are two weeks later.
without the caterpillar, right? Yep. We got a little monarch caterpillar here, you all. Butterfly Garden is already in full force. Yeah. So if you have any comments, just leave them in the comment, uh, the description box below, and I'll make sure I get back to you. Until next time. Until next time. Bye. Comment if you think it's a boy or a girl. Yeah, Michael wants to know if you think it's a boy or a girl. All right, bye. Oh, nature. Making. Coming at ya.